Power Breakfast with TT on Power 98.7. All right, let's go back then to the budget speech yesterday and get some more reaction to what came out of that speech. And joining me now, the Group Chief Advisor at Ntiso Consulting, Mielani Holeni. Thank you so much for holding for me. I know you've been there for a while. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning, TT, and good morning to the listeners. And talking about bailouts, um, I think you know we can continue on the along the lines of bailouts. Absolutely, you know, Eskom being bailed out there. What do you make then of this bailout? Is that just what the doctor ordered? Well, I think it had to be done. Mm. Uh, it's one of those medicines that had to be administered. Uh, fortunately, it's not uh, the disease. Uh, is worse than the medicine, if I may put it like mm, that. Uh, mm. But however, uh, what needs to happen is that, you know, the balance sheet of ESCOM needs to be freed so that uh, they can at least be able to divert whatever revenue that they are earning into productive means, and that would at least stop further borrowing uh, in the open market or having to rely on grants, you know, from the government. But the one thing we must point out, Titi, is that uh, it's good, well and good for ESCOM to be, uh, allocated, you know, funds, you know, to burn diesel so that we avert, you know, stage six and we still uh, uh, keep the lights on and so on and so forth. But uh, the problem that uh, we are solving is actually much wider than what ESCOM is because it also impacts a number of mm. sectors, mining, it affects municipalities who incidentally also uh, 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 supply electricity to various clients. And they are not being bailed out in the same way as ESCOM is being uh, bailed out. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, was there enough for you that came out in terms of dealing with uh, uh, SO, the challenges at uh, the min- numerous SOEs uh, here, particularly um, uh, those in the infrastructure sector? I mean, Transnet is well documented what the mining sector has been saying about the impact that the failures they are having on their business. Well, Titi, I think, you know, it's one of those, uh, the old adages that, you know, business, uh, government cannot run business. Mm. And and similarly, business cannot run government. So I think, you know, the issue of SOCs, which are businesses, large, complex, and uh, hungry for resources, and, and a need for deep skills to run them, as well as uh, planning and so on. It just shows that uh, I think government has reached uh, kind of the end of, you know, the runway with regards, you know, to running the, the big infra- uh, 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 logistics as well as uh, energy and, and big businesses that it has. So perhaps it's time that uh, even those bailouts that are being poured into the likes of Transnet or uh, Freight Rail and uh, Post Office and all the other ones, we, we begin to look at a different plan of how those SOCs are going to be run mm. and perhaps bringing in the private sector so that there can be accountability because they are supposed to be serving the very private sector that is driven by profit mm. and they are attempting to be uh, themselves uh, driving profits from there which they have not been able to do successfully. All right. So we heard as well about revenue egg collection exceeding $93 billion. Is that why we were able to enjoy something of a tax holiday and no new uh, tax increases and so on? Well, the efficiencies of SARS, and you can see that you know they are also running after illegal activities, but the efficiency of collections is uh, uh, something that uh, we can at least load mm. because $93 billion uh, is, 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 is at least helping us to shield uh, the increases in the fuel levy, helping us to shield the increases uh, that would have come across, you know, from various taxes. But then we also say again, you know, the 93 billion could have been 150 billion mm. uh, had other uh, matters been worked out, you know, properly within the value chain of government with regards to not only collection, but also the efficiencies such as what we've spoken about mm. of energy crisis, of logistics, uh, and so on. But however, going forward, uh, it may be that uh, it becomes a lot more marginal for SARS mm. to be able to collect the, the big amounts that uh, they are exceeding the mm. budgets that have been set. Uh, fourth. Will it be enough to off, uh, to offset the other increases that we've seen in terms of uh, the you know no tax changes, no changes to the tax regime? Um, will it put the money back in our pockets, so to speak? Well, I think it uh, for temporarily because, in as much as you 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 will be aware, uh, the fuel price when it has to go up, uh, it goes up subject to different uh, forces: mm. supply and demand, red dollar exchange. 
and all the other things that you know take place within there. So if that has to go up, it means the money then uh, is ducked out of our pocket uh, in some ways. And mm. the food price increases, the money is also pulled out of our pockets in some ways. Uh, currently, the administered you know prices of ESCOM, our the money will be pulled out of our pockets. Municipalities come in and then increase. First July, the money is also taken out of our yeah. pocket. So in a, in a way, it sounds like a great message. Uh, and, and of course, you know, it's, it's, it's good not to have increases, but those increases that are scheduled and okay. are, are administered are going to come through and change the dynamics of what the budget has done. So it's a short-lived uh, celebration uh, because there's more that needs to be done. Milan Holeni is Group Chief Advisor at Ndiso Consulting. Thank you so much for coming on.